This is something interesting. Um, I was uh, at my parents' place uh, helping replace the roof. Uh, I guess the week before last. It really doesn't matter. Um, and I was reminded that uh, the garage door opener, well, the opener worked fine. Um, they've got some buttons outside the garage door that, uh, they're the ones that are meant to go inside the garage and you push it and it opens the garage door opener. Um, and, uh, in, I don't know, the winter of sometime in the late nineties, I got it in my head that, uh, I needed to, um, to come up with some way to open the garage from outside that was kind of secure and not, uh, not accessible to just anyone. Um, so I came up with a plan of using the, the two buttons because there were two doors on the garage door so the, to, in some kind of combination to push this one twice and then to open the door. Um, instead of about building, um, well, the combinations are on there, um, this. So this is kind of neat because it's, uh, I'm showing this because it shows what you can do when, um, with very little in terms of um, supplies and equipment. Um, so where I grew up, there wasn't a, an electronic store readily available and I didn't have a lot of money as a kid that I could go and order stuff. And, and uh, I didn't have that kind of forethought either. I just kind of lacked planning ability. Uh, close to the city was Calgary, which is a three hour drive, and we went there every once in a while and I'd pick stuff up. Um, but for the most part, I, I would desolder components out of things and recycle them um, to make new things. Uh, so this thing is powered by, uh, I think the, the garage door opener had, um, it was a 12 volt circuit that you would uh, close and it would operate the garage door. Um, so I figured, well, if I made just a, a low enough current supply, I could uh, charge um, a capacitor off of that and use that to power the circuit. Um, so when the right combination is finally entered, it basically shorts its own power supply out, um, runs off the capacitor while it's doing that, and then, um, yeah, life goes on. There's some... Um, did I already say charmingly rugged construction? Um, so this is uh, what's referred to as dead bug style construction. Um, yeah, uh, to me it's more I didn't have anything um, style construction. I think I was being a little lazy when I did this, but uh, everything's just soldered on directly. Um, you can see the uh, this is a it's at a Pic 16 F84. Um, clocked at 10 megahertz, and down here, if I gotta move my hand, yeah, it's hard to see. I'm gonna bend the wires too much right there. Can we? There, there's a 10 megahertz crystal and a couple of the 33 uh, picofarad capacitors that were kind of the standard configuration. 2.2k uh, ohm resistor off of uh, the reset, and everything else is just left loose. And then I, uh, so they're soldered. I'm not a complete. Um, idiot. Uh, and then I used to use hot glue to stop things falling apart. Um, so that's the, uh, the microcontroller. Here's the power supply section, which is um, a big capacitor that I would have desoldered out of something. It's going to be at a, uh, I think, that actually came out of an old um, IBM terminal power supply. Uh, what is that? Mm -hmm. uh, 4700 microfarad uh, at 25 volts. Um, and then that's a uh, 78, 7805 um, that uh, has no other filter caps installed that's uh, powering the, the pick. Um, and then the only other circuitry is the relay driver, which is uh, probably a 2N3904 something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, two and three and a four, and then just uh, uh, resistor hanging off of that, um, off of the 
base. Oh, and then uh, the relay. So I think I look at the contacts. Yeah, I did. Uh, I designed this so that when it, um, well, it's the only way it would work actually. When it uh, shorts the power supply out, it uses a set of changeover contacts on the relay, so it uh, it switches over to um, be powered strictly by the capacitor. Um, and then switches back. Uh, so it's a separate set of contacts for the shorting. Um, so yeah, so that's the the electronics, um, all very neatly packaged in this enclosure. Uh, and then, uh, so I don't know where these screw terminals came from, but uh, fairly certain they weren't new. Uh, but you can see they're just kind of hot glued in the box. Uh, and that was that. That was an electronic project. And this thing ran for years. Uh, I don't know what died on it. I have a feeling this, um, the transistor driving the relay may have crapped out because it's not very well protected. Um, I checked it. I'm still getting 5 volts off the regulator. Um, so that stuff seems okay. It's getting power. Uh, it could be a problem with the input, but I tried. Um, running it straight off the terminals and it wasn't working. Um, so I have a feeling either the, the pick crapped out or the driver crapped out, but I'll figure that out in due time. The other really interesting thing though is this case. Um, cases are expensive when you have no money for your ridiculous projects. So uh, my dad made this um, and it's kind of a crafty design. He took, if you can turn this, get some focus. Uh, this is a 2x4, uh, we band sawed the edges off, which is what these two 8th inch thick pieces are, and then um, that would have been flopped on the uh, radial arm saw, and uh, I can still see, I think, yeah I can see the cuts in the bottom, and just a bunch of cuts taken z z z across from there to there to kind of hollow this middle bit out, and then those two pieces that were cut off were just glued back on. Oh, and uh, the box lid was also, I think, cut off of, I think there's a knot there that carries through. Yeah, it's cut off from there. So in the spirit of conserving uh, materials, this is all made out of one little tiny piece of 2x4. Um, so the lid is uh, just cut off of that, the sides are cut off, and then there's a hole drilled there for the uh, circuitry to connect up to the um, well-documented screw terminals. I was actually surprised when I opened this up and saw that. Um, red, white, that's the wires off the garage door opener. Uh, and then one, switch one, common, switch two. And look at the even little NC terminal. Um, but it worked for years. I don't know what died, but uh, it did a, a pretty good job. So. That's, uh, if you find yourself um, in the wilds of southeastern BC and you need to enclose an electronics project, um, here's a way you can do it. Oh, I forgot the relay. I don't know where that came from. I think that was uh, Princess Auto used to have kind of grab bag specials and that came out of that. So salvaged parts, hot glue, a bit of um, dead bug style construction and... Um, and then the lid that screwed on, and uh, I guess the moral of this story is it's easy to get carried away with trying to get something right and get a circuit board made and and uh, do up schematics and all that kind of stuff, but sometimes it's it's actually kind of liberating to just do it. And that's, uh, that's how this thing worked. Um, I think the uh, the software I wrote um, it's really important to focus on this part. The software I wrote worked after the first try. Uh, it was really simple. It um, uh, there was some debouncing on the the switch inputs, and then uh, it would uh, just look for um, a pattern of like one one two two one one two. Uh, and then it just had a, a timer that if after the last switch input um, uh, it would check and if a valid code had been received it would open the door um, otherwise it would just 
reset and go back to waiting for a new code. So if you'd screwed this thing up, um, you had to kind of like push the button, push, push, push. Didn't work, you had to wait a couple of seconds. I think it was three or four seconds, but we all got used to doing that when we had to go and open the garage door. Um, Cause uh, I don't like walking around to the side of the garage. So there you go. Poor man's enclosure construction method and it's good enough. Just a uh, one other thing you can see, here's the lid attached and uh, you can see the grain matches through the lid and the grain also matches through the sides and through, through those sides. So this was one piece of 2x4 that had been cut up. Um, kind of cool.